boss. Take it away. Welcome to our first episode of Talking Decon, where we talk about some extraordinary cases that maybe you've never heard of. Today, I have decided to really put a highlight on a case that was a little close to home for me. Um, I went to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville several years before this. And uh, this case, I don't believe, got the national attention that it should have uh, at all. So uh, I'm referring to the 2007 murders of Shannon Christian and Chris Newsom. Um, a little bit of backstory, if you have not heard this case before, uh, January 6, 2007, uh, several uh, friends uh, had decided they were gonna carjack someone. And uh, Shannon and Chris were visiting a friend in an apartment complex, and it was a very, very cold winter day, snow on the ground, and they decided uh, that was gonna be the random people that they carjacked because they happened to be standing outside of her Toyota 4Runner. For me, I'm sorry, for me, that's always the scariest part of these crimes. Yeah. It's just the absolute random nature of it. Right. You know, somebody decides they're gonna carjack somebody and then all hell breaks loose. Yeah. yeah. It could have been any one of us. Do you guys yeah. check your back seat every time you get in your car? Yes. Yes. Oh, I yeah. Do. I do too, but it's because of the movie Zombieland, not because I'm afraid of <laughs> oh, actually man. getting murdered. See, my but, windows are not tinted for that reason. Uh, I probably should be, you know, being in Florida, but no, it's, yeah, I'm just like, quick peek, and then I can hop in. And then make sure you lock your doors too when, mm -hmm. when, you're, when you, you get, get in the car. car. Yeah. Because I've heard stories oh, of yeah. women, yeah, getting into cars and immediately after men will, or, Crazy yeah. people will try and like just get in the car with them. So. Yeah, most modern cars, I think, once you put it in drive, they automatically yeah. yes, uh, they lock do. the doors. But um, this case was so chilling that it was almost unbelievable that people could be this evil. Like you hear about it, but this was something so random and so evil that it like literally cuts you to the core. So these two young people, she was going to the University of Tennessee at the time, they'd been dating, um, nice couple, and they get carjacked by uh, a couple of the guys. Uh, I think it was LaMarcus Davidson and Eric Boyd, the one that, 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 uh, that carjacked them, and then brought them back to a rental house that they had where uh, uh, three other individuals were there waiting and they separated the two. They had them bound and gagged and their eyes, you know, bandanas over their eyes. And they proceeded to rape and torture and beat them for 48 hours to the point where they took Chris Newsom to railroad tracks, shot him in the back twice, paralyzing him, then shot him in the back of the head assassination style, then lit the kid on fire. Yeah, that's like, that's such a level of extreme that it's hard to even get your brain around it. Like you can just shoot him in the back of the head and just be done and move on. But the fact that they paralyzed him first, whether or not intentional, you know, but they did it. They shot, they had to shoot him three times to actually finish the job. Right, and, and then, then apparently the whole burning thing was to try to get rid of DNA. I, I saw sure. that was, it was Very the same, smart. the same case with, uh, cause they also, poured um, a substance down their throats and I think put them on their, their hands and stuff too. It was probably bleach. Bleach. Yeah, it was, it was right. bleach. Yeah. So that I think was supposed to be to cover up the DNA evidence, or not DNA, but like, you know, their fingerprints and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. but what does doing it down the throat do? Well, I, they, they raped her orally. Oh, so, so they were trying, cover up yeah, it was trying to cover it. But you got to remember, all of these guys are convicted felons, very familiar with the DNA and the criminal justice system. So they were doing everything that they could to kind of cover their tracks. But honestly, it seems like they were doing everything they could, but still the wrong fucking way. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they raped her anally and vaginally as well. Didn't do anything with the bleach there. Just poured it down her throat. Not that I'm thrilled that yeah. they're so terrible at what they yeah, do. Right. At least they got caught. But yeah, they, they know enough to, they, they know they should cover it up, but they have no idea how to do it. Right. But at what point do you think it, turned into more than a carjacking. Oh, what them. happened, they yeah. explained it. So what happens was they were gonna just throw them aside and take the car. That's explicitly what they stated, but then headlights kind of showed up and they got spooked. So they pushed them in the car, took it, and then ran off and then threw them in the back seat. 
So it was the appearance of someone else scared them because they thought they were going to get caught. But the way it escalated, though, to me, it's just like they could have mm-hmm. just thrown them, dropped off, them off, yeah, somewhere yeah. else. But it, it they turned it, it turned into something so horrible, you know. It's just it and it drawn out, it, yeah. It, they Two drew it days. out. Like, like, didn't have to do that. This wasn't just a like, oh shit, we did this, panic and change course. Two yeah. days pass by. There's very little I want to do for two days. No already. shit. Yeah. You know, and I like there's somebody in that group had to have this plan in the back of their head. There's well, no they're way. saying LaMarcus Davidson was the ringleader, and he did. Now, Mar- he had just got out of prison for carjacking, strong arm robbery. Like, the guy is a career criminal. And if you look at him, he's void of any humanity whatsoever. So the guy is, like, on PCP, and he decides, mm. you know what? I'm going to go carjack somebody. And then it just accelerated to torturing these kids uh, to the point where they must have come off of this stuff 48 hours later and thought, we got to get rid of the bodies now. Yeah, they had to have. So Eric Boyd took Chris to the railroad tracks along with somebody else, finished it there. They come back and they see LaMarcus Davidson putting Shanann in a gar- five garbage bags, still alive after they poured bleach down her, shoved her in a normal like brute garbage can, and only then did she die of suffocation. Her throat's burning. She's yep. terrified. Can't see anything. Can't, yeah. And yep. they, it's, you know, I'm hearing kind of from inside sources that they think that her back was broken in order to fit her inside of this garbage can. So while she was alive, they broke her back. Yes. While she, while her throat's on fire, yes. while she's, you know, already probably just beaten the hell. Yes. Oh my God. So she's been tortured, raped. For two and days straight. Believe it or not, there's a female in all of this. Vanessa Coleman is the girlfriend of Latavius Cobbins. And her part in this is not only standing by and assisting, she beats Shanann so brutally that she has a hematoma in her vaginal area. She kicks her and beats her so brutally. Um, and then she helped LaMarcus Davidson put the body in this trash can. And that's where her body was found. So quick question, were they all on drugs or was it just LaMarcus? They were all on PCP okay. so and then they're... smoking weed and stuff. And just normally no one had a job. Uh, it was just kind of, this was their way of partying and having fun. Partying and having fun. Oh my God. So ready for how they got caught. Okay. So the stolen forerunner is identified. The fingerprints from the forerunner led them to the rental house, which led them to her body. Simultaneously, the railroad conductor calls in a burning body on the tracks. It was still on fire? fire? Yeah. So how soon was it identified like after? Within the 48 hours. They, right after the 48 hours, they kill him first. Mm -hmm. Then they go back and stuff her in. They all haul ass. And then, bam, the police find her forerunner parked in front of that house. And then she called her. They, in the document, had stated that she called her parents or they let her call someone, at least home, to kind of state, like, hey, I'm okay, to kind of... Like, yeah, oh. get them off their tracks. Yeah, get yeah. them off the tracks. Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. So to I, delay it, so so they could delay. The thing is with that, like I learned from this case now, and it's really sad that I feel like people have to do the, do this, but like in that instance, I feel like people need to establish like a safe code just in case something happens. Yeah. Just like a weird- I think that's a great idea. Not really obscure statement or something to say, but I'm definitely going home when I talk to my mom and stuff doing that because this can literally happen to anyone. And it's so sad that this is the world we live in. I agree. Yeah, well, it's just like we were talking about off mic uh, before this about how, you know, there's some, I don't know if it's 911 or if it's just some other uh, organization, but like for people experiencing like domestic violence, like they, they call on the phone if they're in the room with the abuser and they'll be like, I want to order a pizza, but it's 911. Yes. So they're like, are you safe? And they can say no. Yeah. And it's just not like they're ordering, you know, pizza details and stuff like that. But like there should be. I don't know about should be, but like it, stuff like that um, would be life saving in, in a lot of circumstances. Because in this, I'm, so it sounds like they basically were like watching her on the phone, 
and then being like, call your parents, tell them it's okay. But yeah, they could be like, hey, I'm at Randy's, and they know that's like a code for I'm in trouble or something like yeah, that. Locate my course. phone. Yeah. So the trial, her parents and his parents were at all of the trials every single day. I cannot imagine hearing those details of what happened to your child. Um, and, you know, I watched Latavius Cobbins talk about what happened. And of course, it was a big lie, essentially, that um, his brother was on PCP and um, he was just doing what he was told. But I did force her to give me oral sex but that's it. Like, I didn't do anything else. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's all. I just participated in every aspect right. of this crime. Exactly. But all I did was ask her to blow me, so. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, LaMarcus is crazy. We were all scared of him. Uh, he was holding us hostage, too. Like, they were the victims of it. Right. And so uh, Eric Boyd got 18 years in federal prison. Uh, many people are extremely upset at that. They thought Eric, uh, who was... The, uh, the one that raped Chris Newsom and killed him should have gotten way more than 18 years. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you take somebody's life, especially in these circumstances, if you take somebody's life as a bar fight or something like that, right. you can talk about Man's exigent slider. circumstances, yeah. but not this, man. Absolutely not. I don't know if you come back from something like this. I don't know if you come back from participating in a crime of this nature. If he had <laughs> raped and murdered that guy and then was like, what the fuck have I done, and took off, uh, okay, still you should go to jail forever. But the fact that he continued on with the crime, yeah. it kept participating in it, and then it just it's it's unconscionable. Yeah, and for sure people should be livid. This is crazy. Eric Boyd got the 18 years in federal prison. George Thomas got life without parole. Latavius Cobbins, who said he just forced her to give him oral sex, got life without parole. The ringleader, Lamarcus Davidson, is the only one that got the death penalty. Is he still on death row now? He is. The okay. woman, Vanessa Coleman, got more than Eric Boyd did. She got 53 years in prison. So what all did she do? She beat up Shana, Shannon or Shannon? Uh-huh. And do we know what else exactly she participated in as far as... Uh, the... She participated in holding him hostage. Okay. And yeah. allowing this... So why'd she get a higher sentence? That's what... Well, Was that's great. one of the biggest questions that people have. But here's the deal. This happened in 2007. Since then, she has been up for parole many times. Yeah. Word on the streets is she's going to get it eventually. Well, I guess she worked with she worked with the government as well. Like she was testifying and says that she was granted immunity by federal authorities for testimony in the federal case of the carjacking. But the state's courts ruled that the federal grant of immunity could not extend to the state charges on murder and rape. So she pled, she made a deal for the carjacking, and the state government said, well, you can't extend this to the murder. See, and it was my understanding she wasn't even present for the carjacking. She was still at the house. Her boyfriend, Latavius Cobbins, did the carjacking. Right. And then when the kids came back, she was like, okay, I guess we're doing this. Wow. So I, that didn't make sense to me. No, it's very bizarre. It's super weird because you figure you want somebody, you want somebody to roll up and testify against other people, not on the carjacking. Yeah. That seems like the lower of the crimes. Well, and I got the impression that, you know, I saw the the testimony of Eric, Bo or, or I'm sorry, George Thomas and Latavius Cobbins, and none of it was true. Like, none of it was true. So it's like, what are we, why are we putting this family through this in the courtroom uh, to describe these lies? You know, I just didn't see any benefit to it. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, they all should have gotten the death penalty. Every Absolutely. One of them. I agree with that. Every one of them. I don't know how you differentiate between life without parole for this person and death row for that person. Because justice is not blind. Right. Unfortunately, it's not. Did you hear what the um, Shannon's father said um, at the end of the at the end of it all? And it was it's just super chilling to because this carried on for 10 years too yeah yeah like yeah. i think it started in what oh seven and the appeals and all that yeah. yeah he was basically saying that the justice system is for the criminals and you don't nothing for the victims victim. yeah yeah it's super frustrating because at a certain point you have to have innocent until proven guilty yeah like you the, the it, you have oh, to cheat course. in favor of, of the in favor of the criminal or you know or the accused i should say because to go the opposite way is just too egregious but then you have crimes like this and it's like 
this is where you wish, at least myself, I wish there were two criminal justice systems. One where it's like, these people are absolutely guilty. Everybody knows it. Fast track to the electric chair. Right. Dunzo. Right. You know, yeah. or you, and then you have the second one where we're like, all right, well, we got to work through some yeah. details here and figure this thing out. You know, though, as a former detective myself, I was always shocked at the amount of money we as a population spend on the prosecution, the detention, the drug court, all this crap. And the sentencing is all over the place. There's yeah. no rhyme or reason. I, I always thought that if I had, a, I had a say in it, my idea would be all juries should essentially be blindfolded. You should never yeah. see the gender or the race or anything of the suspect. Oh, I love that. That alleviates anything, right? Yeah. Then there should be mandatory sentencing for every crime. So whether you're me or her, if we do the same crime, we get the same thing. But this is bullshit. Yeah, it's this ridiculous. This girl gets 53 years and the guy who raped and murdered somebody gets 18? Yeah. There is no rhyme or reason to that. This is as, as citizens wind up having a crisis of faith in our government because you look at something like that, you go, how is this even possible? Yes. How is this fair? Right. And that sort of undermines, like, we have to believe in things as a group. We have to believe that justice will prevail. And then you hear things like this, and it's like, that makes no sense. This yeah. guy could get out of jail and go back to a life. Right. After Even if he does every single day of his sentence, which maybe he won't, you know? Well, let's talk about the crime scene itself. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, <clears throat> they found DNA on her body, despite the whole bleach attempt. Um, and I can't... I can't believe that I heard his defense attorney say this, but they were trying to say that LaMarcus Davidson raped Shanann, but didn't anally rape her. And the prosecution said, well, his DNA is in her anal area. And he literally said, well, everybody knows semen drips out into the anal area. Everybody knows this. I was like, this is common knowledge. No, guys. he didn't. Jeez. He did not go there. So I looked at the pictures of the crime scene. And, you know, the first time I saw the inside of the house, it just brought me back to my narcotics days. I'm like, that's a typical crack house. You know, barren, no food, no furniture, clothes and shit everywhere. Um, there was bedding in the room that Shanann was kept with an air mattress, but there was no like visual, like you, you couldn't walk in there and go, oh yeah, a brutal murder happened here. That's not what it looked like. That's not what it looked like at all. Hmm. So the, the evidence that they got was probably all microscopic DNA. There was no bloodbath. There was, you know, it, this, it wasn't sensational. Oh, yeah, because they shot the guy right. by the trail, I mean, on the, the railroad tracks. railroad tracks. Yeah. What about Shanann then? Like, then she was beaten brutally, and there was, like, vaginal bleeding and all that kind of stuff. She was so. kicked. Yeah. And he was uh, raped with an object. They, I don't know if they know what that object is. Some type of either broom handle or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I never saw whether that came into evidence or whether they found it. And then they also mentioned that Eric Boyd, so they did find male porn on his phone. Right. So yeah. he was a suspected person to maybe he might have raped him. Um, although with the object, like you guys said. But the, the thing that, you know, in terms of cleanup, it's not our normal, you know, massacre or um, even even an accident with a saw or something like that. It, it It's... It would be very different. It'd be almost like a forensic cleaning, like just a, a deep cleaning, a sanitization type thing, because there was just no. Maybe drug residue in there as well. Yeah. You know, there was, know um, it was a lab or not, but. Gun casings, clips, um, alcohol everywhere, sure. you know, that type of thing, uh, drugs everywhere, residue everywhere. So, you know, they're all admitting that they're drug dealers. Yeah. They, they all admitted that. Um, if you're going to deal with the rest of your lives while I'm being a drug dealer as well, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right? But so, the it, thing that I think, and I don't know if you guys saw this, there was a documentary done on the family. And um, 
to say that their family will never be the same again is kind of putting it mildly. But it was chilling when they interviewed her father and the camera is on him for a good five, six seconds. And he's just sitting there and he says, I got a rage in me you wouldn't believe. I hate in me that ain't normal. To live with hate is heavy, man. Yeah. Heavy. It definitely is. There It'll is a own you. I saw a story online. So pretty much what happened was they had kids, you know, they they like to sleep over their younger kids. Mm -hmm. So someone took their kids to the friend's house to sleep over. Mm -hmm. And then the kid came back the next day and was like, their dad did something to me. The father went over. He told the mother and their kids to go upstairs and he shot him in the head after he was like, did you rape my child? And he was like, well, yeah. And they shot him. Who did that? That was the father of the kid that got raped. Which is kind of, I feel like, if her dad had the chance to. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'd be one of those I don't situations. know anybody who wouldn't. Yeah, you just, like, it's it's one thing to be the victim of murder, to have a family member be the victim of murder. This is so past egregious that it's really the only justice that's warranted in this situation. Like, I'm not. Yeah, I agree. And I don't, like, you know, I don't understand. I can't comprehend the strength that it takes to sit in a courtroom with these people and to not leap over the railing and take a run at him. Do well, you guys one of the I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, do you guys remember um it was a year or two ago the gymnastics coach, the Olympics yes. gymnastics oh, coach yeah. Nasser. Yeah. Um did you, you coach at Michigan? Right? Yeah, uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Um it was not Olympics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. no, Olympics too, but he was also the Michigan. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so it was just the Sports. double whammy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's um there's video from that trial um of one of the parents of the victims. And, you know, he's he's in the box. You know, the dad can look right at him. And the dad asked the judge, um, like, before they're wrapping up, he's like, can you grant me one thing? Can you grant me five minutes alone in a room with that man? And the judge kind of giggles and is kind of like, you know, uh, yeah. uh, no, no, sorry, no. we can't do that. And then he's like, how about one minute, 30 seconds? And he's like, like just trying to haggle with them. And the judge is like, sir, I, you know, I understand absolutely and empathize with your position but yeah we we have rules we have laws we can't do that and then the dad goes okay and then he just leaps over and he tries to get to nasser and tries to yeah. beat the shit out and everyone of course erupts yeah. and, and tries to stop him and stuff but they're watching that video you're kind of like yeah you're so close yeah. you're so close exactly get to, get, I, you root for him yeah you root for him yeah. Yeah. yeah we're all rooting for him it was this was the 80s i believe and there was a a man whose son was molested and it was molested i don't know if it was a murder as well and they had arrested this perpetrator outside of the state room. They flew him back in. And there's video of it. He's walking through the airport, and the father is standing by a bank of pay phones. This is how long ago it was. And he had a gun on him. And as soon as the guy walked by, he just came up behind him and just shot him. And I don't know what wound up happening with that case, but it's like, I wouldn't be surprised if that guy just got well, time served. I or... was just going to say, I would venture to say, if Eric Boyd gets out, because he's not an old man, right? 18 years isn't a lot. No. And if Vanessa's been up for parole twice already and she gets out, I would say daddy's going to take revenge. Yeah, and I also don't think that a jury would convict him. Probably not. You know? Probably not. I wouldn't. No way. No, there's no. absolutely no chance no of that. By the way, who's still doing PCP? <laughs> like there's no drug that has worse PR than PCP. Yeah, you know, I don't fentanyl. know who does it or yeah. why. When they I was do in it. narcotics, it was very commonly dipped cigarettes would dip in PCP, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how they would they would do it. Yeah, I just every story I hear about, nobody ever says, "Oh, I woke up feeling great after a night no. of PCP." <laughs> it's mostly young men that are doing it. It's just the, yeah. it was wild. Like we were talking about it a little bit before we started, where it's like there's a story, Big Lurch, the rapper, who years ago. Got high on PCP, yeah. attacked his roommate, ate parts of the roommate. I mean, what? That's just, you. Know, that story only has to happen one time. Yeah. I'm not the brightest guy. Yeah. I take some risks with my health. Yeah. But that story only <laughs> has to happen one time for me to go, oh, yeah. well, that's something I'm never, yeah. ever doing. Never yeah. do that. Yeah. When yeah. I was on it, I never ate anyone's face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, on that note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed our first episode of Talking Decon. 
We enjoy diving into these stories and we want to hear from you. Are there any crazy murder mystery type stories that are in your community that maybe didn't get a lot of press that you'd like us to look into? Comment below because we want to hear from you. I hope you guys enjoyed our first episode of Talking Dead. Let us know. No, that's, no. that's AMC. <laughs> that's copyright. Why did I say that? <laughs>